On a move, my name is Timmy Africa. I was born and raised in Move. This is a quote from Move's founder, John Africa. To quote John Africa, the coordinator. Quote, people ain't gotta do nothing to get locked up. All they gotta do is be available. The cops will do the rest. Cause as long as you got prisons, you gonna have them occupied with prisoners. The system don't build prisons to correct people. You can't keep a prison filled with criminals if ain't nobody committing crime. And you can't keep people committing crime if everybody was filled with the freedom of equality. But when you got a word called equal in your system and no demonstration of equal, you got plenty of people to fill your jails, plenty of jails to accommodate these people, and plenty of politicians to accommodate the money that is made through these people. But the politicians ain't called criminals. They're called politicians, public servants, legal employees, public officials. End quote, John Africa. Long live John Africa, forever. that uh, one of my favorite guests in the world is Dr. Suzanne Ross. Uh, I refer to her as my earth disturber. Well, uh, with her today, she always has dynamic guests. With her today is the one, the only, uh, uh, is it Minister of Confrontation? Minister of Confrontation. Minister of Confrontation, the fire starter herself, the inimitable <laughs> Pam Africa. And uh, they're going to bring us up to speed on what's going on with uh, Mumia, um, uh, which is extremely, extremely important that we stay abreast of what's going on. Because uh, as Mumia goes, thousands and thousands of other prisoners go. So this is more than simply something uh, uh, in history. This is nonstop current events. Uh, so I'm going to start then. Excellent. Uh, with that, I'm going to let uh, <laughs> you, you, you ladies can, can, can uh, pick it. <laughs> well, I'm glad you mentioned that about uh, Mumia's case uh, having effect on so many other prisoners. But more than that, you know, I like to always remind people and say this, you know, I've been, Pam has been doing this work forever and ever and ever. And I joined her in the early 1990s, or in 94. And um, I was an activist for a long time before that. So I always say that when I joined this movement, you know, I didn't come in as a naive kid or even a naive a young adult. I was a mature activist. And when I saw what this movement was about, I never left it. And um, it's definitely not by chance or out of laziness that I've just hung in there all these years. And um, I want to say that much as I love Mumia and think Mumia is an amazing human being, scholar, revolutionary, so many things, um, it's because his case represents so much more than him. And it's not only the fate of thousands and thousands of prisoners, political prisoners, social prisoners, all kinds of oppressed people, but the struggles of the world and what he represents in terms of embodying a, a fierce, fierce, committed, lifelong, no matter what the consequences are, struggle for justice. And to do that from death row for almost 30 years, and then when he came off death row, and so many people predicted that 
he would just slowly, you know, vanish from the scene, not literally physically, but that people would stop being right. involved. And here we are all these years later. Mumia was incarcerated in 1981. He was framed. They began the framing much earlier, and Pam had direct contact with that. But by 1981, the famous December 9th, 1981, the famous confrontation happened. And um, that led to his imprisonment, to his being nearly killed to death right on the spot, beaten up by the police, uh, but a t ultimately to being tried in a kangaroo trial that um, uh, not only got him convicted, but sentenced him to death, shockingly to thousands of people who are watching this case. So um, we go back to that. And then I mentioned that about his impact. I recently got a um, email from somebody in Denmark. This guy writes and says, uh, you know, we had a committee a long time ago, and we have a little bit of money left. We still want to contribute. You know, how do I follow up? And I said, wow. And he said, and then he, um, I write him back because I was about to visit Mumia, I think, the next day by coincidence. And someone else writes me back from Denmark who's a um, uh, member of the parliament in Denmark, the national parliament, and also a member of the European parliament and also um, in charge of foreign affairs for, I believe it was the Parliament of Denmark. And anyway, he writes me this letter. He says, this person who just contacted you happens to be a friend of mine, and he mentioned to me that you're going to be visiting Mumia tomorrow. I had to write you right away and tell you that um, I visited Mumia in 1995, and I will never, never forget that visit, and will never forget him and what he stands for, what he's endured, and what he inspires in all of us. And please give him my very warmest regards. Well, that's the kind of response we get from people around the world that you don't even know. Ex I, never heard of the, I never heard of this guy. <laughs> I don't know much about Denmark in general. But that there was this kind of love for Mumia there. And because, precisely because Mumia represents so much more than himself. So we come to this moment in history. It's now almost 37 years since mm -hmm. Mumia, December 9th will be the 37 years since Mumia was incarcerated and this whole process started. And by the way, I just want to mention that uh, he was convicted and on appeal, this case was rejected by the United States Supreme Court when all kinds of issues were raised, like a false confession, they had some kind of phony confession from Mumia, um, witnesses who had been uh, intimidated and lied, and so much, so much evidence, and the testimony of a court stenographer who overheard the judge on the case say to a colleague of his in a courtroom, uh, obviously the jury wasn't there, saying, I'm going to help them fry that, and I say the N-word, Pam hates when I say N-word, because she thinks the horror of the word should be said. But as a white person, in deference to people who get offended, I say the N-word. He says, I'm going to help them fry the N-word. That was then reviewed in a Pennsylvania court where the judge said, well, it wasn't a very nice thing to say, but it doesn't show bias to, against Mumia. It doesn't mean that he couldn't be fair. And the United States Supreme Court, the Third Circuit Court of Appeals supported that and the United States Supreme Court supported that. So Mumia, as of about 10 years ago, looked like he had no chance in court. And, um, you know, we never gave up, but legally, he had run, the case had run its course. Everybody rejected everything, except for he was taken off death row and put in life in prison without parole, which what we call slow death row. So a new thing happened two years ago, which changed the dynamics legally. On August 7, 2016, an action was filed by Mumia based on an illegal ruling that the United States Supreme Court made uh, around that time. And the case was Williams versus Pennsylvania. Williams was a prisoner on death row. And Williams's case had been originally prosecuted by somebody named Ronald Castile. 
Ronald Castile was a senior prosecutor in the Philadelphia court who later went on to become a Pennsylvania Supreme Court judge. So this guy, Ronald Castile, who embodies so much of this case, he, you can't talk about anything that happened to Mumia practically without looking at what he did and his critical role in the conviction, the death sentence, et cetera, the lack of opportunities for, for appeal. So Williams, this other defendant, said that Judge Castile, when he had been a prosecutor, prosecuted him, and then when he, the case came up before the Pennsylvania Supreme Court, he then got to review the case, and that's a conflict of interest. As I say, you know, a kindergarten child should, would know that the same person who made an original ruling can't appeal to himself to look to review that ruling. That, that, that's, conflict of interest is hardly the word. It's like going to the same person. You may as well not have a jury. You may as well not have anything. So when, um, when that case was filed by Williams in Pennsylvania, um, Mumia's lawyers and Mumia's supporters, everybody said, hey, this was your case too. We tried to get Judge Castile to recuse himself back then, when he, but he said, no, just like the judge who thought it was okay to say, I'm going to help them fry the N-word, said that was okay and you was a bye. <laughs> Thank you. You can say that. Thank you. <laughs> That's what he said. That's right. And I'm very happy you said it, but I won't. <laughs> Uh, Out of uh, deference, people have been very quote. offended. I've had a lot of experience with this, with this particular word in this particular context. Uh, and a long day breath. Even more. <laughs> no, no. I'm saying with people asking me not to say it. I don't mean that, you, that people haven't had as much experience with the concept. Yes, but you're not, you're, you're not the I'm type not of person. But you're not the type of person who uh, uh, says it with all the animus. Right. Uh, uh, and and uh, self-importance that... Uh, I try not uh, to take, adva uh, take advantage of that, but Alambe Breath, one of my great friends and revolutionary comrades who passed a few years ago, asked me specifically not to say it. And I said it at some well, event. Well, I love Alambe. <laughs> and in deference to Alambe, I just want to say that um, just recently, just recently, I'm reading my phone here, um, um, uh, the former acting chief of the Kentucky Police Department instructed a police recruit to shoot black teenagers on site if, ca uh, if caught smoking marijuana. Mm. Um, he, didn't, he didn't say this. He wrote it in an email. Mm. So he was, he was uh, uh, so sure of... The uh, justice. Correct, yeah. that nothing would happen to him. And... Uh, uh, a direct, the direct quote, uh, and they're in court now about this thing. And again, he was the deputy chief of police. Uh, the direct quote is, um, fuck the right thing if blacks shoot them. That's from assistant chief uh, Todd Shaw. So I don't know uh, about... Uh, saying the n-word not meaning anything but it apparently meant something to him right uh uh so much so that uh he said that if they're black uh for smoking marijuana Atlanta. smoking which is marijuana even legal these days in most states uh, which was always little or nothing right, uh, right. at any time unbelievable um, shooting to death. um uh, and this just happened this is not something well, from we'll the talk about 70s later. and 80s when we talk about Mumia's new book called Murder Incorporated, uh, we can say more about that because the, the level of stuff like you, what you're saying is unbelievable. Out of deference to people like Alambe, I don't say it. You guys say it, I have no problem I'm with it. I'm from Harlem, I'm from Harlem. <laughs> you can and, say uh, it, I'm not uh, from Harlem. Uh, 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 <laughs> I don't have that license. I, uh, well, uh, I think that you should... Uh, I should take that license. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I, I appreciate it if... if, if uh, and it's not the, the word itself, it's the spirit that you use yeah. in not saying it that is... Uh, 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 yeah, God is a word, everything yeah, is a yeah, word. Yeah. Words are meant mm -hmm. to be... Uh, and yeah. to me... You know, the, the way he said it, people got to understand. Yeah. And all the N-word could be nice, 
naughty. Yeah. You know, whatever. Dick yeah. Gregory. But yeah. what right. this judge right. said, right. 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 Was and pretty uh, disgusting. I'm going to help him right. kill the nigga. Right. Right. Fry him. Fry him. And fry him. Well, yeah, fry right. the nigga. Right. 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 You know, right. he said it with such a passion, you know, that people such gotta white understand the superiority. feeling, the feeling right, yeah. that right, was coming right, through right, this man, right, right. and or uh, you know, right. um, I'm not gonna, you know, it's it's just to me when it's a quote like that, right. and you're dealing with right. a trial, right. and or uh, you gotta bring it on right. powerfully right. and truthfully right. of what it is he right. said, right. so right. that people can understand it. This right. isn't some abstract conversation. Correct. Correct. This is the man who had me as a life. Correct, correct. You know, he think in the palm of his hand, but Mumia's life is in the palm of the hands of the people who got him off of death row, who saved his life several times. And all, you know, and our power. And all, they look at us like a bunch of, you know, in words, if you want to go well, there. Yeah, but it's a quote. Yeah. And it's, it's a quote. And I yeah. understand, you know, Alain being. Um, you know, saying to Suzanne, don't right. say it. I mean, I understand her and, respecting what And the most significant said, word is not approach. the N-word. Uh, the most significant word in that sentence is the word fry. this. Yeah. No, not fry, uh -oh. this. Yes, right. Because by this saying one, right. this one, he's, he's it, you're saying right. that there's a this, bunch of them. That right, they're, right, uh, right, right. Uh, you're talking about mm -hmm. whole, you're not talking he about sentenced, one. That judge sentenced more people to death than any Correct. judge in the United States. And, and more most of them were black. Most of them were Correct. black, exactly. Correct. Correct. And his contempt, I'll never forget sitting and in the that's courtroom. that's the word is, contempt. Sitting in yes. the courtroom and hearing the worst thing, the worst thing that I can remember was, well, there are two worst things, but I'll tell this one first. When um, Mumia was supposed to be executed on August 17th, 1995, he had an execution date. He had already been measured for a coffin he was on a separate section of death row for those who were ready to be executed. So he was already measured. He was told, this is the end. So there were just a few days left or a week left, and we were in the courtroom, and his lawyer at the time said, uh, you know, there are all kinds of requests for you to um, vacate, to, I forget what it's called, when they postpone, they essentially cancel the date, the, right, the, right. the execution date. And he said, with the worst a tone of Nazi cruelty, with of Nazi cruelty, he said, he has several more days. What's he so nervous about? And I thought, here, I will say, motherfucker, you go on death row, and you be about to be executed. And I don't have any problem referring uh, to saying well, motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Neither does that one. Yes. Uh, uh, so uh, we're in the school, uh, uh, in the motherfucking school. <laughs> yeah, so okay. I, I taught for many years. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. um, so let me just have, finish this one thing. Okay, okay. So um, this case basically was opened up by this issue. This, the Supreme Court ruled, the United States Supreme Court ruled, was that that had been incorrect, that what they did with Williams in terms of allowing Castile to be the original prosecutor and then the judge on appeal was a violation of constitutional rights. Nice. So we are waiting for this similar ruling on Mumia's case because Mumia is not exactly the same as Williams, but the similarity is that the same guy, right. Castile, was the prosecutor and was also the Supreme Court judge. Right. And this is a cartoon. Hold it up. We may as well show this up. This uh, is a this summary is, of the case. You can, you can zoom in on this one if you can. There you go. So uh, this is done by Seth Tabachman, a wonderful cartoonist on the Lower East Side of Manhattan, who's done a lot of work yeah, for Seth. Mumia. Yeah, don't worry about it so much. I'm gonna I'm gonna photograph it and cut it up and really show each uh, individual pain. And this particular panel shows. Judge Castile, as the Supreme Court judge, ruling over Judge Castile's filing as the prosecutor. And guess what? Judge Castile, attorney, the, the judge rules that district attorney had been right all along, that he himself had been right all along. So that's in a nutshell what this case right, is about. Right, right, right. 
what you think, Judge? I think you're a genius, Judge. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Uh, exactly. Sound like Trump uh, listening to uh, himself. Uh, yes. Right, yes. Right. <laughs> Hallucinating. Um, uh, we, we, uh, we only have an hour, and this is right. um, very, very detailed. And, and you can't really understand this without understanding uh, John Africa in 1978. Yes. Uh, and, and the animus that came out of the MOVE organization about a lot of things that today uh, makes you a hero. A lot of the things that, that um, uh, the MOVE organization stood for had to do with the environment, uh, uh, animal rights, things like that. In the 70s, that made you some sort of hippie nut. Uh, back to nature correct, freaks. Correct, back to nature freaks. Right. Uh, and this is where the animus stemmed from, and it became, it really blew up when uh, the late John Africa, the, 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 the eternal John Africa, yes, yes. Uh, 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 actually defended himself in court and won, and that just exacerbated the whole thing. And one of the things I have to say about the MOVE organization is it's one of the most tenacious organizations I have ever seen because I've never seen so many members go through so much hell and hold their ground uh, uh, after so many years. Tell us about the MOVE organization. Bring us from 78 to the 80s and what happened to spawn this whole this this whole thing well we got a half an hour and that's a big we'll one go for um, it. John Africa um, pulled together a group of people and you know, all people from all walks of life and you know, all to give us a teaching about life and how important it is to preserve to fight for the air the water, the soil, the necessities of life. And I remember when I first came around, I used to, my, I had two sons that was asthmatics. And you can just go into the store and you can see like a couple, a few bottles of um, things for asthmatics. And then you can go get your prescriptions. Um, but that's when they were younger. By the time 1977, 78 had came through, when you go in there, um, there was rows and rows and rows of, you know, medicine because people was having these bad asthmatic attacks. Um, the air, and uh, you know, when people would be talking, when I remember when Move was talking about the air, and uh, you know, it's a whole lot of other things that was going on. I didn't understand the importance of the air or, you know, the big thing about, you know, the water because at that point I turned my tap on and you can drink it. It was bad then, but it's nothing like it is now. Right. I want to point out that we've been fighting inside the prison about the water inside the prisons. And uh, not only where Momia at, but throughout the state of Pennsylvania. There was an article in Prison Legal News where it talked about a doctor that worked inside the prison in Pittsburgh died from drinking the water. Mm. There was also an article, and this was recent, and also I just found that out, so we're gonna really be doing some big things bringing attention to what is going on there about the water. In Greatersburg, and I say that, you know, we're still talking about John Africa and the importance of water. All our water is, you know, messed up. But the prisoners, you know, they don't have an option to get themselves some, and, and in some prisons, like in Greatersburg, you can, you do have the option of getting spring water, mm -hmm. but it's $20 a case right. for a $5 case of water. But in the prisons where people don't have money, and all, you know, and it's the same out here, you know, it's people who have money that can get, you know, um, water in bottles that they claim that is better because the earth don't accept none of it. Right. And then there's people who can only afford um, Deer Park and the other waters, and then there's people who can't afford it at all. Man. But in the prisons, and are we out here fighting for our water, but we got to fight for them brothers and sisters and children and great grandparents and stuff that's in them prisons about their water. We get one example right after another. In the prisons and uh, where, um, you know, move people are at, and, uh, and we're in there because we have been fighting and continue to fight 
about the air, the water, and the soil. That deals with big business. And uh, when you start dealing with them straight on, it's like Martin Luther King was okay till he stepped into that war. And, uh, and you was really dealing with big business and all their big money and promises of, um, of you know, the murder of people, the taking of the land. Um, John Africa teach move people that there's nothing more important than fighting for the air, the water, and the soil. That is the thing that unites us around the world with people. That fight, and of the fight for life. Because when you talking about animals, and you know, I remember in the very beginning I was a supporter, and you know I saw a move on TV. They was demonstrating at the zoo. Yeah. They was demonstrating when a circus came to town. And uh, you know, I was seeing with the bullhorns and in the media they would say there's move with their usual rhetoric. They was demonstrating at the reservoir. They was demonstrating about police brutality. I wasn't in move at this time. And I'm like, you know, they demonstrate about everything. Right. Right. And uh, you know, and I'm saying, Dad, you act as if there's nothing right in the right. system. Right. And that's what they were saying. Right. There's absolutely nothing right in the system. You have to destroy Destroy it all. Mm -hmm. You can't leave one bit of it. And also, um, as years go on, you know, you people who heard about move and was called move like I was a bunch of back to nature nuts. <laughs> and uh, you know, I was one of them. I was and, probably uh, you know, one of them too. <laughs> yeah. And uh, um, but then you know, as years go on, you see it, and it's just getting worse and worse and worse to the point that people are finally seeing. And when you go back into it, where was move demonstrating right. at the board of education, which people had so you know we had some choice words for them, you know, yeah. back then. But it wasn't popular to go into the uh, Board of Education and demonstrate the way we did. But we were fed up, you know, with, you know, the lies, the misreputation. We took our children out, and uh, you know, and our children, Susanna tell you, and uh, they're all self-sufficient. Right. And uh, they have their own businesses. And all uh, you know, smart. Uh, this is the second generation, the ones we saw in the video. The second video. generation. Right. A lot of the first generation got jobs inside the prison mm -hmm. and uh, doing work the same right. way. Right. And it's another thing that John Africa taught move people that no matter where you're at, and all uh, you got to be moved and put out information because in them prisons and all uh, you have to talk with people and bring people around inside that prison you not only have inmates you have guards you have the um, superintendents and things they need the exact same information because they're miseducated and you got to show that equality and make them fight for what it is that they're supposed to have inside the prison where our sisters was at dealing with the water and uh, you know um we was complaining about what was happening with our sisters our sisters had to make the guards understand you're locked into the same conditions right. and uh, when you washing your hands you're washing your hands with this water and right. uh, when you flush that toilet that water touches the parts of your body right. and uh, you know um and you know the drinking the cooking all that stuff was happening move made the change our women went into a confrontation with the government at the prison that lasted almost two years. And when it was over, and all you know, everybody had bottled water. You had to access the bottled water. And you had to show the guards that when you go into the warden's office or the superintendent's office, they had spring water. Mm. You know, they treat you like they treat us. They don't care about you. Mm -hmm. And all then, you know, like in Greatersford, they, in order for a person to work in the prison in greatest foot, you have got to bring your own water in. Mm -hmm. That's for the in, for the guards. But they didn't have that same thing for the inmates. And also then they started this situation where water was $20 a case. Right. You know, that it's, it's, it's the insanity that's happening, you know, there. The food, you have to fight to get, you know, the, the food that inmates have right now is poison. Mumia and my brothers and sisters and everybody else inside the prison that, you know, have different illnesses and all, uh, they give, was given Mumia as a diabetic and all, uh, stuff with um, cake first thing in the morning was on the menu, all kinds of starchy foods and all, uh, this is a brother who came off a diabetic shock. So it's nothing unusual, but it was brought out 
and it went around the world what was going on here. So they give Mumia another diet, but you know, they give them fruits and vegetables, but the fruits and vegetables is like a one, you know, on a scale of from one to 10, it's a one or a two. And also, I mean, they're still feeding them poison. So, you know, we're battling, you know, that kind of stuff inside the prison for inmates who cannot fight for themselves and still the same thing on the outside. Um, I'm glad you said that because there are a lot of people who will, who will watch this and believe that a lot of the things that are happening to Mamiya are specific to Mamiya and political prisoners. And a lot of the things that you are actually describing is more the rule of thumb in mm. prison, especially if you're poor and black. That's which that's is the majority of who's in prison. Which is the right. majority of, right. of prisoners. But you know, it's something that people bypass. A lot of people, when they talk about, you know, inmates inside the prison, you know, especially black men, they'll show them, you know, real angry and fighting and killing and, you know, wanting to rape somebody or something. But that is, you know, that happens in there too. But no one ever talks about how the inmates inside the prison, I know when Mumi was, you know, inside that prison and dying, there was a brother by the name of, um, Major Major Tillery Tillery and all Major Tillery to the war. famous his name yeah. should be famous everybody should note this name Major Tillery a people's hero right and uh, and and he did a whole lot of other things filed lawsuits to get rights for inmates inside the prison but he stepped to the warden when he was coming down the superintendent of prison was coming in, into the prison told him that Mumia needed to be in the hospital right. and uh, you, you know and. He eventually told me, he said, you mind your business. He said, Mumia is my business. But the stand he took and other inmates took, and uh, you know, the reason why Mumia is alive today is because of the love that went on with Mumia inside that prison by other inmates. And the fact that um, the other inmates now can have, can get the hepatitis C cure. Because at first right. it was said right. Right, that they wasn't going to give it to them because, and politicians told us this, and, you know, a lot of people, the ACL union was saying, you know, well, you know, there's a lawsuit that's being filed, and, uh, and we're working on it, and uh, but, you know, the probability of Momia getting hepatitis C cure and all uh, would be, it, it can't happen, because in order to give it to Mumia, you got to give it to everybody and across we're talking the board. And we're talking tens of thousands of $1, people. $1,000. Right. Right. Oh, and right. $1,000 right. a pill. $1,300 a pill. That is correct. <laughs> that, is, right. that is correct. Right. That is correct. And you have to that take, correct. take it for 90 days. Cor they said so a $90,000 treatment. Correct. Correct. Right. Correct. But see, John Africa taught us not to believe in them, and uh, but to con stay consistent to the principle of righteousness and be a consistent thorn in these gut punch them. Right. Gut but punch them because it's right that everybody get it. And, and it's 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 uh, thirteen hundred dollars a pill in the United States. Yeah. It's only nine dollars a pill in, in India. In India. So right yeah, uh, it's not like the pill itself right. costs Which is so what much. We so we're talking right. So we we're talking that. about a humanitarian issue, yes. and we're talking about cruel and unusual punishment, punishment because what you are in effect doing is sentencing someone the to death, death right. over time, a long, uh, uh, painful death. And and Suzanne told me about some of the things they were doing um, because. Uh, some of the effects of hepatitis C, uh, one of the effects is, is the itching. And if they're putting Vaseline on them, they're just exacerbating the uh, problem. And uh, uh, this, is, this is just, just well, everything they've well, done to move has well, been uh, uh, way beyond anything that's human. Right. Major well, Tillery, by the way, was one of the people who got the medication, who also had hepatitis C, like right. Mumia, has right. gotten it right. and has been cured of right. hepatitis C. Right. Right. Major Tillery, just to give an example, I'm often very, very moved right. by seeing who's inside the prisons. It makes you cry because right. you see the children coming to visit, the wives, the mothers, the grandmothers, and you see these are not, they don't fit, as Pam was saying, the stereotype 
beautiful looking brothers a lot of time right. with beautiful looking right. children and right. so Major Tillery is now involved in the case fighting for older prisoners right. and what they're subjected to in terms of indignity and health hazards <coughs> by not taking special care of very vulnerable po population. Right. He filed a paper that was incredible. So when you read what he writes and what he's fighting for after how many years in prison and you know, the, the vision this brother has right. and the love for people he has. Right. And there's another brother, Mumia introduced me to both these people, uh, Major Tillery and also um, Bryant Arroyo, who is now speaking by, I don't know, with Skype or videos or what, to Harvard, Yale, Princeton, <laughs> from prison about the environmental issues that are involved. And he's talking about He's done the research and actually won a major legal suit when he was at the prison where Mumia is now, Mahanoy, a major suit to stop the building of a coal processing plant that was going to endanger not only the prisoners, but the guards and everybody else in that community. And guess what? He won. He won this legal suit, which is unbelievable. This brother just is a born fighter. And he's been, he was transferred, he was punished, but he's fighting and like I say, he's now addressing audiences at all these Ivy League places. And Mumia was very taken by him and introduced me to him. And I visited him and other people visited him. And he's becoming very well known as an environmentalist who's covering issues. And the water issue, it all comes back, the water issue is surely, surely something that has contributed to Mumia's itching. Correct. And to many other Correct. prisoners itching. Mumia Correct. says Correct. so many of them Correct. are itching all the time. Correct. So Correct. we are living in Correct. a hell within a hell. Correct. <laughs> you know, it's bad enough, as you say, in the society that we have dirty water and all those things, but you have some options left and some medicines and some cures and so on. With the limited options they have in prison, the suffering is incredible. Um, uh, we have a, a, a limited amount of time, right. and, no, the, and this story no, is so encompassing. Yes. But I, I, um, um, I'm going to give it to you guys to do whatever you want. But I just want to um, make this point because, uh, as I said, the, 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 the move story encompasses so many yes. things that are not addressed. Right. One of the, uh, uh, and for those of you who don't know, uh, if you've ever saw that picture online or, or in Google Images of uh, the young black man who, with his hands open up like Jesus Christ, that's right. Delbert. Delbert Africa. Africa. Del that's Delbert. Um, um, one of the fastest growing populations in a prison today is black females. Right, women. Yes. And the things like that, uh, uh, the atrocities that were visited upon move women are beyond the pale. Right. Uh, uh, I mean, the loss of their children, the, I mean, the barbaric, uh, inhuman, I'm not even going to say inhumane, inhuman right. way that uh, uh, these black women were, were treated by the system and sanctioned by the system uh, uh, is not an aberration in and of itself that today, in the year 2018, there are young women, 16, 17 years old, in prison, being shackled while they give birth. Right. Yeah. There are young women who are forced to uh, wash and reuse sanitary napkins okay. because yeah. they don't have access to these things in, in, uh, in prison because they're um, poor, uh, most often they're black and no one knows what's going on. I want you to address some of the things that, that MOVE has endured and held their ground on, some of the things that needs to be addressed, not just for political prisoners, but mm -hmm. for a lot of our children uh, uh, and, and grandparents who are in prison today. Right. One of the things that, you know, and there's several, um, when MOVE women first went into the prison system, up in Muncie, 
Um, and then when they went to Cambridge Springs as well, they dealt with the issues, the little wickies, these the windows that's in the doors. And our male guards, and our, you know, your toilet is right there, your bed is right there, you change clothes. The male guards was allowed to just walk by there, and women would be on the toilet, and you know, they'll just stand there and look, or mm -hmm. if they're washing, and you are not allowed to cover that window while you are washing. Wow. Well, Move Women took that issue on. And, you know, today, women, and you, know, you can cover your windows, you know, now. Um, the mere fact that, you know, you can now get water inside the prison. And uh, the whole thing where exercising, and, uh, you know, uh, it was up to the guard whether, you know, people go in or out or not. It's a law that you have a certain, you know, you have the uh, yard out at a certain time. This is very important, the sunshine, the air. And uh, if you stop and think about Brother Jamil Alameen, who was in Florence, Colorado, who hadn't had sunshine for years, his body's robbed of, you know, mm. nature's, you know, sun, the air, or even to be able to look at it. And, uh, um, you know, these kind of things. And uh, when my sisters left months, um, Muncie Prison, and that was, they moved our sisters out at the time that they signed the death warrant for Mumia. They moved them out and sent them to another prison. Um, and you know, my sister Janine, I want to talk about yeah. Janine, I'm going to talk about all of them. Janine Africa was a young sister that was in moves, she was a teenager. They killed her baby, three week old life Africa, after a demonstration the move had, and they, um, actually um, let our men, the men out late at night, and she had three gold life Africa. She was glad, because they beat you unmercifully. Man. And uh, you know, she's coming out, she see her husband, you know, see her husband, she's going over there, and the cops grabbed her, pulled her arms open, and all uh, purposely, so that the baby can fall to its death. And, uh, and that's what happened with Three Week Old Life Africa. On May 13th, 1985, and uh, the government came and dropped a bomb, killing 11 men, women, and children of our family. Janine's son, she had another son, Phil Africa, was murdered that day. And, uh, and you know, five other children. Um, also on... Um, one Jan woman and one child escaped that. Ramona and uh, right, 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 right. But in uh, Birdie. Um, and Birdie and Birdie. A couple years ago, Janine lost her husband. And all uh, you know, when Phil came into that prison, he's healthy, strong, vibrant, and all uh, you know, consistent with the teachings of John Africa. He died in the prison. He was murdered mysteriously. <laughs> Right. So, you know, Janine has been through so much. Right. Janet, her right. only child, was killed May 13th. And uh, um, like you said, the only two survivors was Ramona and Birdie. Birdie is now there, killed right. mysteriously after there was a movie called Let the Fire Burn. Mm -hmm. Let the Fire Burn was released because people hadn't heard from Birdie since um, May 13th, 1985, except when he did a, um, um, a private um, interview on what it was that he knew about what happened on mm -hmm. May 13th. So this brother wanted to reach back out and get more involved. Next thing you know, before the movie could come out, and uh, they found this brother, expert swimmer, and everything dead in a, in a hot tub, nice, nice. you know? So, but I'm saying the women and the men has been through so much nice. and still stand nice. strong, Janine still teaches. is consistent, Correct. all of them teachers. Correct. And Correct. all, you know, the women. Correct. Um, you know, um, the thing and that- And they were the ones, uh, 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 Janine is the one in prison, uh, still in prison uh, after all this time, uh, but she's not the one who perpetrated the horror. Uh, uh, right, none made of Made it on p on people, but right. she's the one in prison, and she still holds. Uh, and it comes holds it's coming up to his fortieth year. This they're coming up for the, parole right. this month. Parole. This right. month, I want, want <clears throat> if if possible, my um, younger brother, one of our brothers, Debbie Africa's son, Mike Africa, who was born in prison. You talking about how wow. they cycle and do women, and are uh, you know the coordinator gave us a strategy on having our children. And uh, my two girls, 
Both of them was born. I was 38 when I had Rose, and I was 43 when I had Pixie. Go on, go and on. I had them at home. I might without give it another the try. Access, you know, without, <laughs> right, you know, the um, aid of any outside force. I, we didn't have midwives or anything like that. Birth is something natural. Right. And you got to get yourself prepared here right. and all you know and you know by eating the right foods the right diet and exercise and all but when Debbie had Mike it was right after the August 8th confrontation where they came in they threw hand grenades in the house tore the house down on top of them shot thousands of rounds of ammunition in there water hose that was uh right. diluge hose that was blowing right. bricks off the wall right. they tried to drown and them held and, and, and good held back the fire uh department said let it burn that, that was May 13th that right. was another right. one right. that was another one wow. that's when the other uh, that's a second no one that's a second move. one yeah. Jesus yes. that's Christ. the famous this one was, that's the, the famous one i'm one. talking about was 78 and, uh, and that's the one right, with Delbert right. was like that. That was the one with Delbert. Beat right, him. And right, do you know what right, happened with him? Right. The guy that was seen stomping and kicking right. my brother in the right. face, his wife blew his ass away. Right, and uh, right, he didn't right, die. Right. This was one And don't let him miss, miss that. Time. You're talking about yeah. the policeman. The policeman's, the policeman's wife, wife Karen killed, killed the policeman who was stopping Dove in Africa because she said she was abused horribly by, by this policeman. And they, they, uh, to, cause they was going to put her on trial and charge her because he didn't die right away. And uh, this man was um, in one of them beds that weigh 100 pounds and oxygen tents and everything. But once she started saying that, you know, he beat her worse than he beat Delbert mm. Africa and what kind of maniac he was and how she had been complaining about him. They have this monster, and, and these are the kind of monsters that's in our neighborhoods. And, uh, you know, um, they sentenced her to taking care of him. Mm, misery. Right. <laughs> misery. And what was that other one the, um, with an um, angry black woman? Yeah. And um, she yeah, rolled right. that sucker, Sorry, but kicked right. him into that <laughs> thing. Now, now, I know Mr. Geis had a lot of miserable nights, yeah. but Cowan, and, you know, and I say it to say, they say anybody who kill a police officer and uh, should never get out of prison. Herman Cowan, Bell. never. Right. Speaking about Herman. Right. And, uh, Cowan never did a day in prison because she told of the horrors of her husband. If Herman, you know, it's a role for them and a rule for us. Herman was a victim of what this society do to us. The beatings, the maimings, the killings, the jailings of black folks that hang him from sycamore trees. And uh, he had a natural response. And uh, he said it was a wrong response. And uh, you know, and he showed remorse for that. And uh, Carolyn never said she was sorry that she killed that motherfucker. Excuse me. <laughs> and uh, you know, but she's walking the streets. And uh, you know, so you and know, we want Herman out. Let's, let's take right. this moment. We want Herman out, and we don't want the PBA or Mayor de Blasio or Governor Cuomo to interfere in a judge's and a, a, the parole board's correct and proper decision. Shame, shame on the mayor of the city who felt, as he's about to negotiate with the police for a new contract, that he had to be one of the people calling for Herman to stay in prison forever and ever and not to be released. Shame on de Blasio. Don't let me ever hear him refer to his black son or his black wife or his commitment to justice, ever. You are finished with progressive people. Right. Mayor de Blasio, and you are finished. Yes, and I'm saying and we got to stay on that exposing the injustices. But my family, Jan the women are up. Janet Africa at this particular point right. is up for right. parole. She go before the parole board next week. And if you go to our website, you will get the information on you know how to write the governor to make the phone and calls what's the that's website? necessary. Give it to you in a minute. I'm gonna give all these websites. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. The, but if, uh, if I type in if I move. type in org. If I, I type in move.org, move. it'll all pop up. Don't get too wordy. Right. Yeah. 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 Just go to so, move.org. Right. So Janet is up. They were sentenced to 30 to 100 years in jail by a judge, you know, and it was wrong for him to do that. But 10 years ago, it'd be 10 years. In, in a minute, and uh, because we're, uh, it'd be 40 years, August 8th, that they've been in jail. 
Um, they watch their children grow up. They watch their uh, grandchildren, you know, growing up. They they at the age where they can have be having children themselves. And uh, but you know, please write the parole board, put the phone calls in, and uh, because these political prisoners have put their lives on the line for each and every last one of us. And you know, the least thing we can do when the call come out, I know when. Herman go before um, th this court case that's coming up on the 13th of this month, I believe, and if it's something that people should, you know, if they're calling for a demonstration for people to be there, I'm coming from Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. I'm coming from Philadelphia. A whole lot of people that's upset about what's happening, you know, here. I'm saying that's the least we can do. Show our outrage. Be on these, uh, you know, calling on radio stations. Call news media. Uh, you know. Uh, as far as the governor house go, we went to judges' houses, and uh, it's a certain perimeter that you have to be, you know, away from. And uh, demonstrate, demonstrate by any means necessary your outrage at what's happening with this criminal system. We're doing it for our family, and we're also pushing, you know, Herman's information internationally as well. And our uh, brother Bob Boyle is up at the prison now visiting Herman, the lawyers, and all uh, you know to work out a strategy. And we're just waiting to hear, give our marching orders on what it is that we're supposed to be doing. But you know what I want to talk about is the 30th of April. And don't forget, That's we only have wanna... like about five or six minutes I left, so don't forget the book. I'm going to give you. I want to make sure um, um, that people know that we have buses. May April 30, 30th is the big day when this case that has been opened up, that has been supported now by people all over the world, Archbishop Tutu, Danny Glover, all okay. kinds of people have signed this petition calling for one, that the DA's office release all the records that are relevant to this case so that the truth can come out, and two, that Mumia be released finally now, that it's time for his being released given his health condition, given his innocence most of all. April 30th is a key court date where the new supposedly progressive district attorney of Philadelphia is supposed to announce whether he will release the records or not. How much will be released? What, how much is the, it, are they going to recognize the applicability of what happened with Williams versus uh, Pennsylvania mm. for Mumia? That is an opening to everything being reviewed, everything from his first conviction Everything other than conviction being reviewed, which would reveal all this stuff, like, um, uh, I'm going to help them fry the... Yeah. <laughs> the nigga. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You yeah. say yes. Yeah. 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 So yeah. all of that is a chance. If we get that opened up, truly opened up... I mean, we if have Cardi a, B can say it, We I'm have sure a real can. shot. We have a real <laughs> shot at a new trial on Mumia's release. Please, if you possibly can... That's Monday, April 30th. Many of you have watched and supported Mumia for years. This is a key moment, April 30th. We have buses leaving at 5.30 in the morning from New York City. If you want to get on that bus, call the following number, 212-330-8029, 212 They'll figure it out. They'll, if you can't figure it out, you shouldn't be on the bus. 212-330-8029. Uh, call that number and reserve a seat, and you will get a return call. Or you can email me at a new email address that we've created for this recent campaign. Info Mumia, that's info mumia at gmail.com, info mumia at gmail.com. I promise to get back to you. And my name is Suzanne Ross, so that and, you will hear from me. And there's a birthday event that's happening for Mumia. The campaign to bring Mumia home, they're hosting a um, birthday party for Mumia. And I don't know the details on it because they're working on it here. Everything is geared to sell tickets to get people there and do the awareness. Also, what we're doing internationally is having people, because a lot of people don't know or forgot about what's going on. We have a list of films that people can show in their homes, in their churches. We got in Atlanta. We have it, you know, all over where people, like Case for Reasonable Doubt, I mean, Framing the Execution with Danny Glover. Right. And uh, that's a film that deals with the media. Right. And, uh, you know, there's 
um, I mean, there's just a host of films that you can go to the websites and get information, you know, on them as well. But we are urging people, we really, really need people to do for Mumia what Mumia has been doing for all of us. And free the move nine, long live revolution, down with this rotten ass system, and uh, on the move. We have, by the way, and, and uh, make sure you go. We only okay, got a couple okay, of minutes, so you got to talk fast. Okay, real fast. This is Mumia's la last book, most recent book, not last. Most recent book, Murder Incorporated. It is beyond <laughs> description. It is breathtaking in its analysis of the U.S. Empire. It puts the U.S. Empire in the context of the Roman Empire, the Japanese Empire, the British Empire, and describes the level of genocide, racism, expansionism, manifest destiny, everything about this empire that is hard to read. Let me tell you this book, you have to stop and think for a second what you're reading about when you read it, whether it's a torture chamber for millions and millions of people, whether this is the equivalent of the Nazi Holocaust, but with a history that goes back hundreds of years in this continent, from the Native Americans to slavery to this period internationally, the wars that are happening all over the world. This is one and of three books, three volumes. The first volume is what I'm reading right now. The second volume, I believe, is going to be about the it's secret monitoring that goes six on. Months. And um, the other book is, and what I'm getting to now is the space, the operations of the United States Empire in space to control Earth from space. This sounds like science fiction, folks, it's but real. it ain't. It's not science fiction. This is real. And if you watch what's happening in Venezuela or Brazil today and read this book, you can see the daily applications internationally and domestically of this horrific empire, this horrific empire under which we live and millions and millions of people on this planet suffer from. And all throughout Africa, you know, it's very clear, um, you know, what's going on here. Like she said, it's the first of a three-part series, and the book is, um, you can order the book through prisonradio.com. No, you ain't supposed to tell you. Oh, you ain't supposed to mention. Oh, uh, oh, uh, sorry uh, about uh, that. Y'all, uh, you uh, didn't check know. Out, check out the book. Uh, 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 sorry. That number probably wrong anyway. You can get it for anyway. nothing. Maybe you can get it for nothing. Uh, uh, it is amazing. Uh, uh, amazing. Uh, but the name of the book is uh, Murder, Murder Incorporated. Incorporated. And it's by Mumia Abu-Jamal. And uh, Steve Victoria, Victoria, a filmmaker who wrote this with him. And, 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 and we only have like uh, 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 seconds to go in, in this segment. So, uh, so the last month, let me just tell you. Can I get my phone number? Oh, go, go, ahead. go. Okay, go. my phone number is 267-760-7344. Uh, Say it again. For people to get in contact with us, 267-760-7344. And you can also reach us at uh, free um, mobilization number four, Mumia. Mobilization for Mumia.com. So, there have been dozens of actions happening this past month across this country and in about six or seven countries, maybe more, around the world in preparation for April 30th. This has been an international campaign started by the Fanon, the France Fanon Foundation in Paris, which is headed by Marie Mendes, Marie Fanon Mendes France, the daughter of Fanon. And that's how we've been working. We started with that, announced this international campaign back in December 9th. Hundreds of people signed the petition. People have joined and initiated actions. And this is a renewed energy in this period that we are finding new activists joining the old ones. So Say please goodbye, join Grace. us. Goodbye, folks. On the move. <laughs> Great to be on the show again. Excellent. Nat, thank yes. you so much for thank having you. us. Wow. Uh, All right. Say something. All right. Power. Power. Yes. Revolution Wonderful. now.